Ah yes, nothing quite like overhead Swiss gunfire on a Saturday morning. Hello and welcome to Bloke on the Range. Today we're doing the Feldschießen, the world's largest shooting competition. Now that's not to say that there's 100,000 people all shooting at the same place, because that would be a bit crazy. But anyway, more than 100,000 people are going to be shooting today, and I'm being bitten by flies, um, at various ranges all around the country. Now, Feldschießen literally means shooting in a field. And there are some places where you can still go and shoot in a field, and then uh, whenever the shots need to be marked, people run out with little wands and wave them and patch the targets up. But not here, we're on electronic targets. So, uh, yes. Now, being bloke on the range, we can't just do it simply. Now, you can shoot any of the Swiss service rifles from the K11, G11 up to the modern day. You can shoot a K31 with target sights, which is what I would usually use. You can shoot a Sturmgewehr 57, all dolled up with target sights and stuff on a bipod, you can shoot the Sturmgewehr 90 SIG 550 with a few little minor adaptations for target shooting like a little rear iris. Um, but being asked we thought what would be the worst rifle we could use that fulfills the rules. So we're both shooting K11s, the least accurate rifle you can use with no adaptations for target shooting. That's also special because this is exactly 100 years old. This is 101 years old. Well, hey. So, old iron and steel. The uh, only concessions to modern comfort that we're, get, that we're allowing ourselves is a modern shooting jacket and gloves. And we're shooting over open sights. So we are not using any form of cheating. target sights. <clears throat> now, a lot of the ranges in Switzerland, they are at funny angles, they're funny lengths. It's 300 meters plus minus about 10%. This one shoots quite significantly uphill. So we were here on Wednesday zeroing the rifles because it can make a surprising amount of difference, particularly as the bullseye is 20 centimeters wide. That's about two and a third mower. Now, just to give you that in perspective, we're shooting at about 300 meters. That's the bull. The aiming mark is about that wide and it's green on a camouflage sort of sand and khaki background on a one and a half meter wide frame. So it's not that easy to aim at. It's actually kind of a chore. And with a diopter sight, they're starting again. With a diopter sight, you can wind it down and shoot with a ring front sight or a blade. Um, with these, you've got no sort of orthoptic help. You've just got quite a broad, quite well proportioned actually, aren't they? They are. Yeah. They're not too, too spindly, to quite easy to line up. But uh, when we were here on Wednesday, the light, it was overcast and diffuse. It was absolutely perfect for shooting with modern target sights. Shame that. Yeah, absolutely <laughs> awful for shooting with open sights. Um, it's nice and sunny, we've got a bit more definition on the target. Um, the reason behind this is that, that you get increased depth of field from, a, from, the, from an aperture rear sight through the orthoptic effect of a hole. It increases the depth of field, helps you focus. You don't get that with an open U-notch. Now, um, when the light is brighter, your pupils close up and then you get a bit better definition, a bit better depth of field. It can also affect how much up and down uh, you need to give on the target. And we have basically a choice on these of uh, putting the sights on 300 and aiming straight at the middle, obscuring half of this not very easy to see target, or as I've chosen to do, and I think you have as well, set them to 400 and aim underneath. Now, the amount you aim underneath will vary a bit according to the light <laughs> as well. So you've got the up and down angle, and you'd be amazed actually how much difference this makes, the, uh, the angle you're shooting up or down. And we always find going from one range to another, with the target sights, you can be a couple of clicks left and right sometimes, just for reasons. So we have a foresight adjuster. We both are sat we're satisfied with our zeros on um, on Wednesday. Wednesday yeah. The light's totally different now. It might be good. It might not. It's too late now anyway. Too late now anyway. <laughs> now to focus the mind, there's no sighters. Because sighters are like cheating. Cheating. No sighters. Six individual shots, individually marked back. Then two series of three shots, each being marked back after three shots and then one long series of six. So by the long series of six, if you've got a consistent error going on, 
You're screwed. You're screwed. <laughs> um, so we're going to see if either or both of us can get a medal. So let's get to it. Once again, onto the breach, my friend. Okay. <laughs> You're six in this time, not seven. Yeah, I had to pay special attention. Throw me off, by the way. There you go. It's my stack. Okay, so uh, we're all bombed up. We have our ammo. I've got one mag and two stripper clips, and the chap has two mags so. and the stripper. Yep. Ammunition uh, provided by my taxes. And my taxes. Yep. So uh, Still. thank you, Swiss taxpayers. <laughs> um, now a little point about scoring. This is odd scoring. The bull, the bullseye, the, the uh, twenty centimeter bullseye scores four. The rest of the green silhouette scores three. Then there's a, uh, a ring, and the gap between the silhouette and that ring scores two, and the rest, the outer ring, which is one meter in diameter, scores one. And I have no idea how many points we need. Fifty something. Yeah, I can't remember. Out of uh, eighteen the, shots. I mean, to avoid distraction, let's just not look it up. Yeah, you Go just don't it. worry about it. You just <laughs> shoot as best you can. So uh, let's go on with it. <laughs> Got the range myself because I smell bad or something. Yeah. We are on 400. <laughs> that would be embarrassing. So here's the display that we have on our right when we shoot. The number on the left is a shot counter. The black middle will display the score, in this case numbers 1 to 4, and the bulbs on the periphery um, give an indication of uh, shot placement. A lucky bloke would be accompanied by the dulcet tones of a Stuhlengewehr 57. And this is the sight picture the bloke will be acquiring, just underneath the dark silhouette. Well, this camera is truly horrible. Hopefully, Mark One Eyeball will make it clearer. Oh yeah.
Oh! <laughs> oh. I thought I saw that one go low. <laughs> So the chap is setting himself up now. Uh, Shooting on six, right? For this bright orange K11. Christmas K11. Yeah, Christmas present. Now I had to aim a little lower and a whisper right. But the whisper right was really just think right rather than <laughs> aim right. But I, I certainly had to aim a touch lower. It's unusual because the usual thing is light up, sights up. But uh, yeah. Instant feedback? Nah. No good. Oh no. Shame. Not too many, far too many twos. Oh dear. You get away with one or two. Yeah. Well, let's see. But no, we'll save that. All right, shooting's over, and my turn to congratulate the bloke on an outstanding competition. So, uh, I won a medal. Uh, I got 61 points out of a maximum possible of 68, so I dropped 7 points over 18 rounds, which I'm extremely happy with. Now, you need 55 for a uh, card, and uh, 57 for the medal, so I got that. I didn't. Easily. What did you get? 49. Yeah. I lost my mojo halfway through. And it's uh, there you go. really hard work with open sights. They are really, really, really unforgiving. Yeah. I had a slightly low shot uh, in the middle of the, the final six series, six shots in one minute, and it dropped me right off the silhouette. I was hoping I was going to get through the whole thing without dropping one off the silhouette. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and Excuse me? And uh, yeah, so one off, one off the bottom there. What was quite interesting was that I had to hold a little lower than I did on Wednesday, which is probably the difference in light. Yeah, I had to likewise. And I thought about adjusting. I could have adjusted right a little bit, but with the front foresight adjuster, it's kind of um, tricky. And in the end, I just thought it, I really wanted to move it about that far right at 300, which was <laughs> it's like uh, if I if I screw it up with the things, it's not really calibrated. I'll 
be off the other side and uh, I thought forget it I'll just think right I won't sort of consciously aim right I'll just think right and then it all it was then uh, dropping them in on the, yeah. on the center line afterwards but compared to shooting with a diopter oh yeah it's, I mean, irrespective <laughs> of whether you're shooting with a with a ring or a post and you can shoot perfectly well on these figure targets oh, they're, um, made, they're made for a ring tar ring site like that. that target there you just sit it in the middle and that's it yeah and it's a representation of a uh, it's a very stylized representation of a prone rifleman which is how it's dimensioned and it's a little bit uh, tight on the width but they're, they're hard they're hard to aim at the diopter sight the diopter right sight really really helps well um, so yeah that was hard work not sure if we'll do it again next year like that uh, I might get a 57 out next year. Yeah, why not? Alright. Okay, so uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe, etc, etc, etc. Please consider supporting us on Patreon because the ad revenues off YouTube these days are just half what they were a few months ago. Any assistance you can help us with to help keep producing this kind of video is much gratefully, most gratefully received. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers.